I just wish that somebody had told me about this at the beginning of my journey, not eight years later. <laughs> It's not very often you'll see me parading around in my underwear, but four weeks carnivore today. Um, I have taken photos before and after. I haven't lost any weight as far as kilos, but I'm seeing definition starting to happen here. And a line down here, I can actually feel my rib bones. I can feel my hip bones and my butt bones. Um, and even though I haven't lost weight, I just feel like my skin feels firmer, tighter. It feels so great. I, I really literally just keep touching my skin because I, I mean, obviously there's, you know, there's quite a bit of fat there to go and I'm going to burn through that eventually. Um, but it's all feeling actually not too bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Ten, 10 weeks in now, 10 weeks on carnivore, um, the weight has started coming off now. The first six or seven weeks was nothing, but I've lost about four kilos between weeks sort of six and ten. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm not, it looks like I'm sucking in, but I'm actually not. It's just the definition that's kind of just developing on its own. Um, I can suck in. <laughs> I suck in, it looks like that. But I've still got a little bit of wobbles here, but I suspect that's going to happen at my age and also because of the fact that I've had babies. So ideally, I would love that to be all like, you know, like that and firm and just get rid of this last little bit. Whether or not exercise will do that, I'm not sure, but... My clothes feel awesome on me. Um, I just feel good. So, yeah, I'll keep you posted. But I'm doing it every two weeks, a little update like this, as far as body changes go. So, all good. This is 12 weeks on carnivore. Um, I haven't lost any weight, I don't think, in the last, well, maybe in the last couple, well, definitely not the last week. Um, total of five kilos lost since I started um, and I haven't really been exercising except for walking um, one thing I notice is definitely more of a gap here uh, the skin sort of feels still quite loose I still need a bit of firming up to do but I went to put on my denim shorts the other day and they literally fell down off my hips so I'm getting narrower even though I still look rounded, you know, so that's 12 weeks in and amazing things that have been happening. Um, I used to have a lot of very dark raised red moles on my chest that I was quite concerned about. I'd been to the doctor worried that it might be like melanoma or something. Um, there were quite a few of them and they'd pop up quite quickly overnight, very raised red, bumpy um, and uneven. And they've just disappeared. I've got no moles on my chest at all. So that's kind of crazy. I also had one just above my eye that's been there all my life and it was very red. It's just, it's still a bump, like a little mole there, but I don't know if you can see it. I haven't got any makeup on, so you should be able to see it. But it's almost gone like just skin colored now. So that's kind of weird. Um, yeah, it's just been amazing. Like, results are incredible. And the main thing being that I have no pain, my bladder is not angry, no interstitial cystitis, no rheumatoid. Pretty stoked. Half a squeezed lemon in there. And then I add to that little containers of all my ingredients um, I get about I don't know, a pinch of pink Himalayan salt in there and a pinch
package of magnesium crystals that I got from the health food shop. It's basically an electrolyte mix. Um, it helps when you're on the carnivore diet, although I don't do it all the time now, but definitely for the first month when I was transitioning, oh my gosh, you need your electrolytes. While you're adapting, it's quite challenging. I've got to say it wasn't easy. And the other ingredient I use is cream of tartar because it's actually potassium chloride. So that gives me my sodium, potassium, and magnesium in one little boom every now and then call me crazy don't don't heed the warning that says it's poison on the thing as long as you don't eat the whole packet you'll be fine um, borax because it has boron in it and boron is really good for bones that's a big part of me because I'm healing from rheumatoid arthritis so I just put like a little tiny little pinch of that in there as well Healing from rheumatoid arthritis, you know, causes a lot of damage to your bones and your joints and the calcium gets sucked right out of your bones. It's a pretty gnarly disease to have and I've had it for eight years, so I'm repairing some serious damage here. The fact that I could actually walk in high heels again yesterday, never thought that would happen. My doctor never thought that would happen. So, that's my little morning concoction a little bit more. I'm filtering all my tap water with my trusty grail filter. A uh, little bit of cold in there so I don't burn my tongue. Stir it all up. And it sounds like there's a lot of salty weird things in there and you think it would be really gross but it actually tastes really refreshing and delicious. Don't put any sugar in it. Don't put any honey in it. Trick is no sugar. No sugar. I haven't had any sugar now for five months. Oh, so good. Way better than coffee. I've never drunk coffee, but I know a lot of people trying to adapt to this diet find it hard to give up the coffee. Some people say coffee's okay, some people say it's not. Wasn't an issue for me, but this perks me up like a coffee does. And when I wake up in the morning, I have a morning, I think it's called Morning Affirmations on Spotify. It's an Australian woman, I don't know her name, I'll put a link down. Um, but she just says all sorts of wonderful things, like it's all like I am, I am, you know, I am thankful for this, I'm happy, I'm this, I'm healthy. Just lots of really positive sort of statements to kickstart your day. And I've been listening to that every morning. Uh, I do Wim Hof breathing as well. This has all been part of this healing journey that I've been on and there's been so many elements to it and that's another whole video entirely but I will break it down because even my doctor said Lisa you need to record this you need to let people know like we're in such uncharted territory that's what he told me that he had never ever heard of somebody whose case of rheumatoid arthritis and interstitial cystitis as severe as mine could recover so quickly and so amazingly well and like I said in my first you know video about switching my diet I didn't want to shout it from the rooftops then because it was only three weeks in and I'm like I keep thinking is this a fluke is this going to keep going but you know we're, we're just over three months I celebrated 90 days a couple of days ago um, and honestly I have never felt better in my life I feel like I look better I feel better my health is amazing. I can walk in the highest of high heels. I even walked in high heels all the way back from Cool and Gatta the other day. <laughs> and when we got sashed for pinups, I walked all the way home in my high heels like, what? You'd never know I had rheumatoid arthritis. You'd just never know. Anxiety. I mean, obviously yesterday was nerve wracking, but it was nerve wracking for anyone who even doesn't have anxiety or other issues, you know? It would have been nerve wracking for anyone but I coped amazingly well and that's part of this, you know, the, the mindset change, the, you just feel positive and happy and focused and energetic and it just makes you feel grateful, you know, but I've worked long and hard at this healing journey, like 
when I first started living in my caravan four years ago, I was a very, very sad human and I was very depressed and my doctors were worried that I might try and kill myself. Like it was really bad and I felt rejected and dejected and uh, um, broken, very broken. Like I didn't have any worth or value in the world and that I was always going to be sick and nobody wanted to deal with that. It didn't help that my fiance dumped me when I got sick. So, and I couldn't walk and he was carrying me to the toilet and stuff. I mean, at one stage I couldn't even brush my own hair. It was pretty bad. I was seized up bad. I needed a wheelchair. I couldn't stand up. Showers were hell because I had about a five minute capacity that I could stand on my feet before I would literally fall over. So to go from that to this is nothing short of a miracle. I'm very, very thankful. How could you not be thankful? You get a second lease of life after a chronic health condition that all the doctors and specialists tell you is incurable and that you have to take toxic medication for the rest of your life. I'm not on any medication at the moment. I stopped taking it the day I started doing full carnivore. That's bloody incredible. Sorry, I'm probably ranting on about this. I will make another video about it, but you do become a bit evangelistic about the benefits. I mean, I just wish that somebody had told me about this at the beginning of my journey, not eight years later. <laughs> Anywho, sometimes we need to go into the deep, dark place, into the underworld and learn some life lessons down there before we were able to come back up. So I don't feel any remorse or anything like that just you know it is in the back of my mind wow if I could have gotten healthy maybe I couldn't I think there was a lot of emotional trauma stuff involved in that too like obviously a lot of people that have severe autoimmune diseases like I did have dealt with um, a lot of trauma and I had trauma all my life um, just from our lifestyle growing up and I'll go into more detail about that another time as well I want to make this a semi-short video, but I'm not very good at that because I'll rave on to you guys forever. Mm. Anywho, off to the beach. <laughs>